Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, February 6th, 2012. Our top story comes from the world of medicine. Scientists in Germany have been experimenting with a silk scaffold for regenerating heart tissue. As we've discussed before, silk has a number of interesting applications in medicine due to both its mechanical and chemical properties. The idea is that three-dimensional scaffolds could be created and cardiac muscle tissue grown. Then these patches could be surgically implanted in those who'd suffered damage from heart attack and other conditions. Now this particular silk was chosen because the coarser fibers allow for cardiac cells to grow and communicate with each other. As usual, these experiments were done with mice cells and, while promising, won't reach anything clinical for some time. Once again, from the world of technology, out of the Brookhaven National Laboratory, where they're developing commercial prototypes for their new wearable PET scanner. Now, PET stands for Positron Emission Topography and is generally used to analyze chemical messengers in the brain. Previously, this kind of scanning required a larger machine, meaning the mice they studied had to be somehow immobilized. This miniaturization doesn't only have applications in research, but medical diagnosis. They've already begun work on integrating PET modules into MRI machines, allowing for dual scanning. Ultimately, it'll greatly accelerate research into drug addiction and conditions like Parkinson's, with the already four working prototypes ready for commercial use with this technology. Finally, we turn to the field of biochemistry. Collaboration between UC San Diego and Harvard has resulted in the first fully synthetic cell membrane. This is a big step toward the goal of making a completely man-made cell from scratch. For some review, normal cell membranes are lipid bilayers embedded with proteins that serve various functions. Similarly, cells generally use complex enzymes to assemble these membranes. In the lab, the researchers had a simple emulsion of water, oil, and some other chemicals. By adding some copper ions, it catalyzed a reaction that formed membrane vesicles. Obviously, this breakthrough not only has applications in synthetic biology, but also abiogenesis research, as it may be similar to how the first cell membranes formed. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.